we're gonna try a little something a little different today. Uh, I got a 3.5 liter. I need to pull the intake on so that I can get to the rear bank here of spark plugs. We're just doing a tune-up, that's all we're doing. And uh, it's required to pull this intake to get to that rear bank. So I'm gonna go through the steps required to uh, remove it and install it. And we're, we're gonna start right here in the front with these harnesses. There's a little retainer. You use a cat claw type uh, tool to release them. And they can be tough. You have to kind of work them out. And they'll come away from it just like that all together. Those little push pins. One, two, three of these holes. There's one right here. Get that wire off this side. And then we're going to pull the intake snorkel here. Pull the mass air full of sensor. Release the clip. Put it to the side. Two clips. And then we're going to release the vent hose here. Might as well get the whole thing out of here. It's going to be like that or that in your way. So might as well just unclip it. Okay. And then there's an 8 millimeter uh, bolt right here for the worm drive clamp. Put the clamp on here. We'll release that. And undo this vent line. We can wrap that over here. Like that. These things are usually stuck up there. It's not too bad. And the whole thing lifts off as an assembly. More junk off to the side. Release your red retaining tab right here on the throttle body. You'll see it when I pull up. You can't see it. Just pull it back, and you'll be able to press the tab right here. Pull it out. You got another line right here. Quick release. That little yellow tab right there. Get off to the side. We're going to release it over here. Same thing, cat claw. Comes in very handy. Now instead of fighting it back and forth, I release it from the vent valve here. Just follow it over. And you can release it. Same thing. It's got a yellow uh, hang on there. Just like that. Get it out of the way. Now it's not required, but I undo the washer line, get it out of the way, and I get rid of this brace. I want it out of here. It's it's two, uh, I think it's 13 millimeter bolts. Yeah, 13s. And for me, with the impact, it didn't take long at all. Just gets caught in the cowl there. To that, out of the way. Now there's a big fat line on the back here. That's a big uh, vacuum supply line, and that feeds um, the booster and all that. Comes this little junction right here. We already right took this off the air intake. So it's, instead of fighting that clamp, it's best to just release it over here. It's got quick release, kind of nice actually. This will all come off with the intake then. There's a eight millimeter bolt right there underneath it. That's a bracket that supports the intake. So you can undo that. Take that out of there. Now, before you go any further, make sure you clean this area off with compressed air if you have it. I already did. I'm gonna do it again real quick around the, where two pieces of meat. Now comes the quick part. That's pulling the eight millimeter bolts from the intake. You get this harness right here. 
it clips into the intake manifold right here to take that off so we can get to our last bolt. We've got a bracket back here, there's an 8mm bolt right here also. Eight millimeter bolt right there it supports the fuel line. And you could turn that back and out of your way. Now we should be basically free except for this PCV line. Let's see it? Just pull up on it. Just presses onto there. First thing after all that is to pack these. We start trying to touch anything. All right, make sure your sealing surface here on a lower intake is nice and clean, and um, you know, scrub it up, and then in the end, uh, wipe it down with some brake clean on a rag. And then we're going to do a final cleaning of these ports with compressed air if you got it. got my new gaskets on here they're all pushed in changed out and cleaned up now you're gonna see oil in the intake here don't freak out about that they all have that it's carry over from the PCV system speaking of PCVs here's the hose that actually feeds the intake and that's me nice and oily and maybe a little swollen so make sure you clean it with um, brake clean before going back on so it, it sticks back onto that PCB over here. After that, we can start lowering it down onto here. First thing we got to do is this connector we took off earlier. That's for the heated PCB. Make sure that's connected up and then this guy back so we can drop down and push your PCV line all the way on and then we can start lining up these ports in here so I can... at this point in time this little 8 millimeter bolt that we took out that supports the um, intake on this side underneath the throttle body we're going to put that in by hand right now we can now get this one aligned by hand again it's upper intake bracket okay that's in there and now we can start putting these intake bolts back in here also by hand and we're just gonna jump around and we're going to snug these up so that the intake snug to lower. And then we can do the rest of our connections. And we can do a final uh, torque sequence. Just going to jump around, snug it down. And I'll support the intake while we're doing everything else. All three of them. And then don't forget this little black bolt with the coarse threads on it. This little bracket right here supports the fuel line. We can just tighten that down at this point. Connect our electronic throttle body back up until it snaps. Push the retainer. At this point, before we go any further, I want to make sure we get this quick connect in for the booster here. So we don't put this brace back on and then we're fighting it. So might as well do it now. This will clip on the brace. This can go out of the way until we put our snorkel back on. Um, at this point, I would want to 
torque the intake down, and then we can tighten the two support bolts. All right, it's time to torque that intake down. Um, I'll put a link to the picture of the, the torque sequence, or you can just follow along and uh, watch me. They're 90 inch pounds. There's only one pattern we gotta do. We're basically gonna go from the center out. And yes, I really do torque um, the critical components as I'm showing you the video. This is not just for the video. Um, you don't want to mess around with the plastic intakes and warping them and all that and cracking them possibly. You want it to clamp down evenly as they specified uh, what they found with the proper torque sequence. And then they'll clamp it down evenly. And uh, we'll never have a problem that way. I haven't. Now that we're down to the you know, non-critical bolts like this one, um, and this is all torqued down, we can just tighten these to support it. Same thing over here. At this point, we're putting this EVAP um, vacuum supply line back on. It goes like this. Now we'll hook it into this side first. We'll get our push pin in. We could stick it into the purge valve until it click like that. Now everything back here, all our vacuum lesser boost, everything is done. We don't have to dig back here anymore. Um, let's put that brace on. I'm going to do the air intake snorkel next. Make sure there's no excess debris that got blown into here. Just going to throw it on there. It's nice, it just comes as an assembly. On and off. Make sure you wiggle it all the way on there. Get your three tangs hooked into the air box and then down. Mass airflow sensor. Push it until it clicks. You can do this vent line at this point. Lay it back down. Before you forget, crankcase ventilation line. So they click nice and tight like that and get tightened on this uh, clamp. Okay. Put this support back on. We'll do our washer line before we forget it. I like to put these nuts on. And you can follow the witness marks on the cross brace itself for alignment. Basically falls back into place. Snuff these down. After that, just do a recheck of your area, make sure there's nothing loose or missing on here that you forgot maybe. Now we can go test it. Alright, so that wasn't so bad, was it? Um, the upper intakes on these are actually easier than the old. 24 valve docks on the Tauruses, and uh, there's a lot less connections and all that, no EGR to deal with. And uh, just goes to show if you follow a video like I have uh, been producing, that's uh, step by step, or you uh, follow a book, 
you can uh, do this stuff and save yourself a ton of money and get your maintenance done and not you know, delay it any longer than you have to to try and save up for that big bill to do a tune-up. Uh, I hope this helps and if it does, subscribe down below please. There's always something new coming out, uh, all kinds of uh, Ford vehicle problems uh, from cars to trucks to trans to diesels, doesn't matter.